Tilcom School at 100 Years Old, a short film by Bernard von Schulman. The building was constructed in four phases, the first in 1917, the second in 1921 here, and then 1945 on the upper end, and then 1962 here. The reason the school was needed was because the Yates family decided this was an opportune time for them to subdivide their property, and in 1907 started selling lots in the Tillicum Gorge neighborhood. This meant that very quickly there was many more students than there was places in the Craigflower or Ptolemy schools, and there was a need for something to be done. As a stopgap, the school board initially decided to place a one-room schoolhouse at the corner of Burnside and Tillicum, which was highly and totally inadequate, but it was a stopgap until a proper larger school can be constructed. So where was Tillicum? In 1915, the one-room schoolhouse was up in this area here. There was a group of parents that were seeking to have the school put down here at Kerr and Tillicum, and the school board wanted to have it in this area here, calling it the Tillicum Road School. Why the school was one block further over between Obilia, Albina and Aurelia, I'm not entirely certain, but it was known as Tilcom Road School for many years. May 1917, the tenders to the school were issued, but it was uh, done only to construct the most basic four-room school, and there was no interior plumbing bit paid for, and there's no uh, finishing of the basement at all. The school opened on September 4th, uh, which was very quick construction. Now this is the original architectural drawings and it's only the central part that was actually built. The pl original plan was for four classrooms more than what we have now but that wasn't done. The basement, the original architectural drawings had a girls playroom, boys playroom, boys bathroom, girls bathroom but none of that was done because initially there was nothing complete in the basement, not even concrete on the floor. Now the architect Watkins worked for the school district and as you can see these are a bunch of the schools that he did design and there's a fairly familiar consistent look to his schools. Monolithic concrete, uh, monolithic brick buildings which really don't suit uh, the region that we live in and it's with Tillicum that he finally broke with that and he decided to build something that was on a more human scale and out of wood which ultimately is much better for this region. This is the school in 1921 when there was the first addition constructed and this needed to be done almost immediately because there was only four classrooms in the first part but eight grades. The addition of another four classrooms allowed there for it to be eight classrooms. It's one of the early classroom photos and there's many classroom photos that will be peppered throughout this. Initially when the school was built there was no stairways because they hadn't completed the basement and these areas behind these doors were used as extra classrooms. This central foyer here was used as a performance area for class um, concerts and the parents ended up sitting in the hallways to watch them. 1917 classroom within the school. Most classes had somewhere in the range of 35 to maybe 40 students. Now if you're inside and looking towards uh, the library, you can see these windows up here. This was originally the old north entrance to the school before the addition was constructed. Another early class. And this is the transition to the 1921 wing, which was significantly taller than or higher than the original, which means this ramp. But if you look at the top here, that beam is where the 1917 school ended. 1930s cam teacher pictures. Another classroom photos. And we have many, many classroom photos. Now, if you look north and really at the time, the school was a significant site on the landscape. Today, you cannot see Tillicum from the same angle, but in the day, Tillicum was the most significant building in the area. Classroom more, classroom photos. And now, 1930, you can see the school here in this map from the fire insurance plants, but there's also houses on what is now the school property. The school did not buy the whole property, the whole block, they only bought part of the block, meaning for years there was houses on the block with it. Grade 8 class from the 1930s. 1931, you can see off in the distance here in the snow across the road, there was nothing on the other side of Tillicum, but we can see the houses here that were on the same block with the school. This is just right after the war, and with this here, you can see there's an addition to the building here. This was the gym, which is now the library. You can still see that there's houses that are on the same block with the school. 
Tilikum School, I was very active in a lot of athletics and sports. 1946 team here, 1938 newspaper piece about it. And you can see here the Thunderbirds, they had a T on their Thunderbird logo on their shirts. And both the boys and girls had the same shirts. Grade 8 was a very important part of schooling in British Columbia well into the 1950s because in the 1920s and 30s many people didn't go beyond grade 8. So a banquet for the kids graduating from grade 8 was always a big deal. And this being a working class neighborhood was even more of a big deal. And you can see they had tomato juice, they had assorted cold meats, potato salad, stuffed celery, sliced tomatoes, rolls, pie a la mode, tea and milk. It's very much sort of a almost a picnic-y type of food. Not anything fancy, but on the other side, you can see that there's all these various different toasts that were made. This was an important part of um, getting through the school system. 1950 grade 8 class. 1951, and we can see here Cuthbert Holmes extends all the way up to Tillicum Road. The school here is, all of it is we recognize today except for the new concrete construction, but there's still houses on the block with it. Another class. The staff in 1961, and this picture is of interest because it's from what is now the library, the old gym, and is the only picture I've seen of the interior of it, and you can see this had a stage. Now I don't know I would have loved to see more pictures of the interior of um, the old gym, but I haven't been able to find any. 1972 is the first year with kindergarten, and by this point the school no longer has grade 8, but it still has 8 grades within it. The biggest difference between the school in 1972 and current day is that the roof has changed, and it's no longer a slate roof, roof as it was at the time, and is now rolled steel. The slate was considered a danger in case of earthquake, which was, I believe, the primary reason it was removed. 1960, late 60s class photo and another view of the school in 1972. Here's the teacher's parking lot in 1972. And you can see the type of cars that teachers were driving back in those days. 1975 is the earliest picture I can find of the 1962 cinder block addition. And this was a very much unfortunate construction. It doesn't fit uh, with the rest of the school. There's no reason why they could not have constructed out of wood and made it look like the rest of the school, but instead they chose to go for a cinder block construction, which we've seen in recent years needs serious seismic upgrading because it is not a safe way to have constructed in this earthquake zone that we live in. April 1992, Prince Philip comes to visit Tillicum School, possibly the biggest event that happened at the school. There is a video that exists of his, um, his time at the school. Unfortunately, the sound quality is very low and the video is somewhat deteriorated. It's an old, old VHS. I was trying to find a clip I could use in here, but none of them were particularly suitable or worked well. If I do, I might add it in at a later point. 2004, this is the school 12 years ago. It's the last year the schools had grade 6 and 7. And with the loss of the grade 6 and 7, the look and feel of the school has changed because the school has become a much younger school. Not there's anything wrong with a younger school, but it is a different feeling school. It's also the first year my kids attended. And in the end, I've had four boys go to this school. And the current one, Max, who's in grade 2 in Mrs. Cannon's class, is still going here. So thank you very much for watching this as Tilikum celebrates 100 years of learning. If you like what you've seen, please like the video, please share the video, and please subscribe to my channel. I have many more interesting historical videos um, of British Columbia and will be producing more of my own new content. Thank you.